Do 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 Cult of junk. I don't know what the most appropriate thing to call it would be. I think it's appropriate to call it the cult of junk. I know anybody that's actually listened to anybody else pontificating upon lenses or been to a photography forum, which is where all the stupid people hang out. At least most of them are stupid. Um, there's a cult of uh, modern junk. And I don't mean that modern stuff is junk. I mean, autofocus is much faster. Lenses are sharper. Uh, what really, however, has improved in uh, the past 15 plus years has been two things only. Well, three things, but one has not related to optics. One is uh, wide-angle lenses, because that's been a serious issue in the past. And number two is zooms. There are really, like, only a very small handful of, like, old Nikkor zooms or anybody's zooms that you could actually say, wow, these are, these are amazing. And I don't mean amazing that's like, wow, that's a beautiful image. And, of course, nobody judges an image based upon what lens it was made with. I mean, they judge it based upon what it is. But, I mean, relative to what, or as I've, you know, infinitely said over and over again in countless videos, compared to what? So this lens is great. Compared to what? No, no, no. My new lens is really bad. It's just sharp. Compared to what? It's really sharp. A perfect example of that. And I railed on that lens endlessly. And it's just beyond disgusting in how it renders. Is the uh, new 105 millimeter f1.4 um, Nikkor. Overpriced, junky Chinese lens. A little, of course, there's a junky little AFS motor in there, micro motor, because the optics take up basically the entirety of the lens barrel. There's no room for any other type of autofocus system, so that's not important. But the lens just renders horribly. It's flat and miserable, and it washes everything out. It's got a bazillion elements in there that overcorrect for everything. The, so there's really only two things that have improved, or three things ultimately. One, obviously, is autofocus speed, but that's not relational to optical output. Of course, autofocus speed is incredibly important, obviously, for sports action and wildlife and photojournalism, where you got to hit it when you hit it. If you missed a shot, you missed a shot. And, you know, you could have missed the award-winning shot of the shot that actually put money in your pocket because the lens wasn't fast enough. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about optics. And the only thing that's actually improved are two aspects, zoom lenses and uh, wide-angle lenses. Now, this is a pretty old-ass lens, and this is just one example. But I keep hearing people in these uh, photography forums, and people have actually said to me in comments, it's like, well, I like that lens, but it's kind of old. You know, it's showing its age. I keep, I keep hearing people say that over and over again. Showing its age. <laughs> what does showing its age mean when it comes to optics that is not technical? Now, if we're talking about technical photography, we're talking about like reproduction photography, um, sports action wildlife, where um, you know the the technical performance of the lens is important, relational to the actual output of the shot, which is far far less artistic uh, than it is uh, reportage. In other words, you're actually capturing the moment of some amazing shot, and that of course still is artistic. But what's more important is it to be incredibly fast and incredibly sharp. And I do understand that, but that's not applicable to much of photography, a photographia, or writing with light, as it pertains to photography as an art form. And this includes portraiture, wedding, oh God, countless things. Macro photography, talking about bokeh, the je ne sais quoi of the lens, color saturation, micro contrast. The micro contrast is incorrect. It should be called uh, image fidelity. Here's a lens that is showing its age. This lens is old. This is a 300 millimeter f2.8 Nikkor. It's all manual focus. So if you like adapt this to a Fujifilm camera or a Sony or a, uh, a Canon, it works the same way as it did on a Nikon back in the day because it was always manual focus. Now this lens is older than piss. Um, however, and you can look at the Flickr page for this lens. And this is just one example of many, many examples. You can, by the way, you can get this lens pretty cheap these days, like four, I've seen them as cheap as $400 used on eBay. Um, this lens is 
crotch melting perfection. You take a portrait shot, you back the hell up, you take a portrait shot with this lens, adapted, it's like stuck, stick a monopod right here, uh-uh, stick it a $20 adapter right here, uh-huh, stick it on your X-T3 or your X-T20, this, this lens will melt your crotch, it's perfection, it's silk, sex, and sugar, the bouquet, incredible, the output, incredible, this whole thing that I keep reading all the time is like, oh, that lens is showing its age. Relative to what? You know, I have, I shouldn't be admitting this, but I have this 300mm 2.8, this old manual focus one with a built-in lens hood. Here we go. Here we go. i lock it in. There we go. This lens hood never did want to lock in very well. The uh, new uh, AFD, and then the AFS, which is super huge and heavy with no VR. And I have the VR1 3028. So I got four different versions of the 3028 from uh, Nikon. Um, all of them are near optical perfection. This old lens, even today, is like, you know, hey, fat tattooed uh, schmuck, you know, the guy that's uh, tested, you know, more lenses than anybody else. You know, if you compare this old lens for portraiture, a lot of people forget there's a lot of uh, portraiture that's actually done with the 3028. If you compare this, and I have the best, most expensive portrait lenses money can buy. I mean, I do. I've got the Zeiss. i got Voigtlanders. i got the best Nikors. Period, I do. If you compare that relative to the best modern lenses, you know, where does this score? You know, because I keep saying compared to what? And compared to what? This lens is still a 98 out of 100. Still! This lens is older than older than dinosaur crap, technologically wise. It's always been a manual focus lens and it's still a manual focus lens. This, uh, you know, unless it's technical photography like macro reproduction, product photography, um, photojournalism, photography is still, last I checked, oh yeah, it still is, it's still an art form. When it comes to image fidelity, color saturation, rendition, you take a shot at 3028, you know, back your subject up, your model, you know, like I did quite a few shots um, with this lens adapted to uh, the uh, Fujifilm X-T2 of uh, a chick on a horse out at the horse park. Incredible. Uh, incredible. You know, oddly enough, I've never seen any other videos of people on YouTube. Maybe there's one or two where people are actually taking portrait shots of 3028. You know, other than the fact that it is big and heavy, you know, which it is, of course. Um, 3028 is one of the... And this is not my opinion. You can ask some of the best model photographers in the world. They will totally agree with me 100%. It's like, is a 300mm 2.8 like one of the best portrait lenses in the world? Like that fat, bald schmuck on YouTube? He's like, he's right! He's right, it sure is. Nobody talks about this lens. Uh, a modern 300mm 2.8 AFS Nikkor VR1 or VR2 is the latest. It's very expensive. <laughs> um, and of course, you would not buy a modern autofocus lens and stick it as a manual focus adapted lens on a Fujifilm or a Nikon or Canon. You would buy one of these because it was manual to begin with and it's still going to be manual. But the issue with portraiture is it doesn't matter because you usually don't have to chase your models around or chase, you know, the wedding, the husband and wife. It's like, hold hands, stand over there, stay still, hold on a second, but, you know. You got focus peaking. You know how awesome focus peaking is? Focus peaking is the tits. Just, whoosh, you see it right there? Boom. Whew. See, so it's, you know, I keep hearing people, oh, God, that lens is uh, getting old. Compared to what? This is still a 98 out of 100. And this is no insult to Fujifilm, okay? Because I love Fujifilm and their lenses, but as far as a portraiture lens, you know, I know it's big and heavy, and I know it's manual focus, okay? But just pure image output. Fujifilm's, any of Fujifilm's extremely well-made, incredibly well-made, Awesome modern lenses of any variety or focal length, and I own all of them. They don't even step a foot close to this. This old lens is older than a dinosaur turd. Um, I've actually had a few people chirping and pissing about me lately. It's like, oh God, that's a tattooed idiot. I used to talk about the 
deals on old lenses, and now all he does is talk about modern, expensive lenses. And that's not true. The real answer to that is, is that I've made so many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos about incredible, old, awesome lenses. It's like, how, you know, what do I need to do? Do them again? You know, I've already talked about those. You know, my position has not changed on old, incredible lenses. Ah! <laughs> Hasn't changed at all. Hey, Halloween's right around the corner. Well, first, yeah, Halloween, then, uh, yeah, Thanksgiving, all that sort of holiday crap where the weather gets cold and you, you sit and turn the heater up and you start eating soup. Every day is like soup because you're freezing to death, at least I am. Um, <laughs> someone's going to screen grab this. But this lens is incredible and all this nonsense about, uh, ah, that lens is old. <laughs> you know? It's ridiculous. Photography is an art form. People like that need to shut the hell up and realize it's like, you know, I judge a lens by its image. I mean, I don't care if it's the fastest. If you need fast autofocus, get it. You don't need fast autofocus for portraiture. You know, realistically, other than your composition and how you want to light things and all of that's insanely important, you know, I want the ultimate image output. And there's not a single modern lens that will step a foot to right here. And this is just one example. There are other examples that are exactly like this. 180mm 2.8D series, 105mm F2 DC Nikkor, 135mm F2 DC Nikkor, Voigtlander 58mm 1.4. That's not an old lens, but it's actually based on a really old Topcon lens design. Um, 55mm F1.2. Um, oh, Jesus, there's a lot of them. Oh, my God. Let us not forget the awesome ha 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 105mm f1.8 Nikkor. Um, it's an AIS lens. It averages about $450 used. That's the 105mm f1.8 AIS Nikkor. Yes. Here spoketh the Lord of Lenses. Yes. So read it. <laughs> what was that line from Moses? So, uh... So let it be written, so let it be done. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I'm going to warm my, my tushy against this digital fire after I turn the video off. <sighs> yeah. You know what? Um, black cherry juice has melatonin in it, and I should start drinking it every night. I love black cherry juice, like pure, not fake stuff, real black cherry juice, which is very expensive. Because it mellows you out. It's uh, it's kind of like uh, sticking on silk, silk underwear and laying in front of a fire drinking. <laughs> it gives you this warm, fuzzy feeling. No, I don't drink alcohol. No, I don't do drugs. So don't even insinuate that. Anyway, dinosaur turd, but still better than any modern lens. You feel me? Thank you so much. Here spoketh the Lord of Lenses. Goodbye.